Hello, and welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Ranch. Today I will be giving you the Capra Comparison Picks for UFC Fight Island 8, the prelim matches, a select four, four prelim matches. That uh, I'm not doing the whole card. There's 14 fights right now on it, and I just don't have the time because time is of the essence. Today it's Sunday. The event is on Wednesday morning. <laughs> so, and you know. But anyway, I'll give you what I got. I'm doing, um, like I said, four prelim matches. What I do is I take, if you're new to my show, I take uh, my favorite sports handicappers. I call them cappers for short. Some people don't like that. I don't really care what they do or not like. My show. <laughs> so anyway, I take my favorite handicappers and I put their free picks from the internet. Not Patreon picks, nothing I pay for. I do pay for some, some knowledge, but I don't put that up here because that's, you know, I'm paying for it. So I take their free picks no. off the internet. I post the link in the description. And what I do is I put their picks side by side and see who they're taking in the event. And uh, then I put my own pick on top of theirs after you see everything they got. I throw my little insight on what I think's, who I think's gonna win and how. <laughs> Unless they're underdogs, then I don't really have to say how. But anyway, let's get into this. I'm sorry for rambling. Today, I might ramble quite a bit because I got a lot of information, man. I, I, I usually don't, you know, it's Sunday. I, I soaked up a lot of info this morning. A lot of notes. So, thankfully, I put time markers in throughout. So, you don't have to listen to me ramble on. You can just hit the... The next fight, you know, and, and I'll say, boom, time marker, go right, or you go right to the recap, and you can uh, just get the whole gist of what I'm taking. It's a like a time check. It's a, in the thing on YouTube. You hit, hit, click the time marker, so you don't have to listen to me ramble. You go right to the next fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll show you. I want to get free time. So here we go. I'm gonna start out. Okay, I'm gonna start out with uh, this fight between I don't know. It's Dulca or Dolcha. I'm gonna say Dolcha. Dolcha Lungiambula taking on Marcus Perez. Uh, Dolcha Lungiambula. He's uh, he's from the Congo, but he's. Also fighting out of Cape Town, South Africa. Well, he was. Now he's weird thing. His camp is, uh, I learned today, Black Cobra Striking Systems. Uh, that's with the coach Dewey Cooper. He's like known as a, a good striking coach. And um, that is located in the Philippines. Anyway, Dolce Lim Limbu. <laughs> Huh, what the heck? Lungiambula. Lungiambula. He comes in with a record of is that 10 his and. Lungiambula? His last name is Lungiambula, I think. I think I'm saying it right. Lungiambula. Uh, he comes in with a record of 10 and 2. He's the favorite here, minus 137. He's taking on Marcus Perez. You know, he comes in with the Joker makeup. His fight name is Maku. What I wrote it down. Maluco. Maluco. It makes me think of like a insane clown posse and the great Malenko, isn't that? Like uh I don't know. That's I'm showing my age there. <laughs> but anyway, uh <coughs> so uh, let's, we got uh, Marcus Perez, he's coming in with the record of twelve and four. He's the underdog at plus one seventeen, okay? Interesting enough, the total set at one and a half rounds. Oh, if you think it's going over, you're paying a little juice of 125. Under that, it's one minus 105. Okay, here we go. This is going to be this is going to be interesting. Um, Dolce Lungiambula, aka Champion, Champion. That's his fight name. 
champion Maluko. <laughs> Maluko. Um, oh man. I, okay. <clears throat> His last uh, fight was a loss against Magomed Ankalaev. Uh, front kick. He got knocked out, I guess. Um, Marcus Perez coming off two losses. The most recent one being uh, he got knocked out by Drikas Duplessis. That was a knockout left hook, according to. And I, yeah, it is. I saw that. Um, he's fighting out of Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil. However, he is now fighting out of American Top Team. I looked into. Uh, Brandon, turn that down a little bit. Okay. I looked into. Uh, you know, just. I, everybody knows about America Top Team, Coconut Creek. They got. And I looked at. I was looking at their fighters, you know, because there's a ton of people from there. And um, they have, matter of fact, I counted them. Because Carl's Condit, who, oh, let me tell you about last night. Burr, put the brakes on. This is why I have time markers. I'm going to go zip, zip, rewind. I forgot to recap yesterday. Recap time check. Recap of UFC Fight Island 7. Oh, my God. I can't believe I forgot to do this. Guys, I did so well. Whew. I start. I am starting out 2021. Fire on a roll. Check this out. Last night. No, you're not. I am. I'm doing good. Look at. Look at all the green. That's a win. Last night, overall, I went eight and two. What? You did a video. What you needed to do again? Oh, so what? So what? I'm glad I did it again because I ended up that video, the one I had to do over again, every pick, and they were all underdogs, and they all came through for me. Anyway, I started the night off crappy. I picked uh, David Zawada, who lost in split decision. So right there, I started off with a uh, heartbreaker. Uh, Ramazan Emiev, or Amiv, he lost to him via decision. But then... uh. Let's see. I got, um, I don't know if these are the right order, but uh, Vanessa Mello, I had picked her to win by decision. She did. Austin Lingo, I picked him to win by decision. He did. Okay? Oh, just let me gloat a little bit in my glory for If this doesn't help, happen that often, all right? Okay, then uh, this is the, the one I did the perfect main card. I'm missing a page. Am I? Okay, David's why I got that wrong. Then, oh, other prelims. That, uh, you know, Phil Hawes' Imovov was postponed, so that doesn't count. Then I got uh, Yunnan Wu Yan, or whatever. <laughs> Mulan, Mulan I, I picked her to win by decision, but she lost to Jocelyn Edwards. Those are the only two I got wrong. The Jocelyn Edwards... No. And the David Zawada. Those are everybody else I picked. And now, look, Carlos Philippe, by decision. Picked it, by decision. Uh, Punaheli Soriano, I picked KO first or second. I, well, you know what? If you look at the show, I erased it. But I picked it, and then I erased it. I said, I don't have to use underdog. But I did. What happened? Knockout, round one, over Dusko. Then... Alessio De Chirico, knockout, round one. I picked the win by decision, but it doesn't matter. I picked the underdog to win, and he did. And Li Jing Liang, I said TKO second round. He did it in the first, still. Boom, boom, boom. Eight and two, people. Eight and two. I am starting off winning. Stoked about that. Uh, I need to get a drink. I gotta press pause. Your mouth is dried right out. Anyway, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I just had to tell. I had to brag. I noticed some people in my comments noticed that I that they're the ones that I'm like, yeah, you're right, man. I did do well. Perfect. I watched the fights with the Bulgarian cowboy. I actually I joined his. Uh, I'm now a member of his. You can join for monthly fee. I did the, just the little one. The, the perks are fun. I like Vlad, Bulgarian cowboy living in Serbia. 
He gets, uh, matter of fact, I got his picks here. Let's start. Let's get into this. I'm sorry for that little thing. Now I'm going to restart. Here we go. I already told you all the crap good stuff about these guys, right? Their camp's black. Cobra striking systems, coached by Dewey Cooper, Dolce. Let's see who's taking him. We're going to go back and forth on this. Okay. We've got It's Your Boy eBay's Fight Predictions taking Dolca or Dolce. I don't, depending on how you want to say it. He's saying by second round TKO. Good on you. Good, good on you, EB. I like when people, when the cappers get specific and detailed. Method of victory, all that. I like that. Um, taking Marcus Perez. Taking this clown. <laughs> it's uh, Just Bleed MMA. He's the one, actually, that caught, that was saying Dolca instead of Dolce. So I don't know how you say it, but... Yeah, he's got a tough name to pronounce. I just call him champion. I don't want to though. It's it's just, you know, champion. That's how his face looks on typology too. Champion. But Just Bleed MMA is taking the underdog in Perez. Everybody's down fading Perez because he, you know, on two two fight losing streak. And that but that last fight against Drinkus Duplessis to where he had knocked out that. I guess from what Clint said, Clint from Die Hard MMA podcast, wearing a shirt, big big fan of his. He said it was because there's a sweet spot right behind the ear, and that's where he got he got rocked on that sweet spot. And I, yeah, that's when he's like it's like a it's not like a head-on punch. It's a I don't know. The links in the description. Watch it for yourself. Anyway, um, speaking of that, Clint, he's, this is his deal. He said he's leaning the, uh, Perez by decision. He likes the value, you know, and he's going to officially, he's going to wait for the scales. He's going to wait to see them weigh in, see how they look. But his definite pick is the over one and a half rounds, because like he said, that, that time, per, uh, Marcus Perez is very durable. He's got he's got a chin. That was a slick, weird shot that got him in that sweet spot or something. That that's what Clint was saying. So yeah, his, his bet when he caught saw that it was only a set at one and a half rounds. He's I'm all over that. Definitely, definitely take the over. He's confident going over, and he's leaning. It's going to be uh, Marcus Perez. Now get this, guys. If Marcus Perez loses he's probably because he's on a two fight losing streak he's probably losing his spot in the ufc because dana's cutting people you know he cuts like uh alexis duplessis that's why i said last yesterday i said or you know that's why i said he's gonna win because if he doesn't win he's out he's given it his 110 percent it's now marcus perez is in the same spot, uh, Alessi, Alessi Duplexis, or what the hell is his name? Am I saying it right? Uh, I don't want to have to look. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Marcus Perez, it's, it's win or leave the UFC, all right? <clears throat> um, so Clint said... He's waiting for the scales, but he's going to take it over. Then, over here, we've got uh, the Bulgarian Cowboy, UFC, Celebrities and Classics, C and C. He's on the side with Dolce Lungiambula. Okay. Um, Matt and Craig, they're the tiebreakers. Fight Night picks the boys, the Allen brothers, Matt and Craig, from... Uh, New Brunswick, Canada. They're saying, um, Matt, they're both taking Dolce. Matt is saying first round stoppage. So I'm going to write Matt. KO in the first. You know, some people prefer Matt's predictions right. over Craig's for real. And some people prefer Craig's the older brother. They prefer his over Matt's. And a lot of times they like when they agree. 
And like in this case, they're both taking the favorite, Dolce. Dolce. So there you have that. Um, let me, I want to add, remember I was, before I got off topic, having to brag about how well I did it, just Fight Island 7. I was going to mention, when I was looking at Marcus Perez's American top team, you know, earlier today, I had a lot of time today. You know, I woke up early, felt great because of last night's victory. Um, I was looking at, and I was, I go, wonder who the first undefeated player or fighter you're going to see if you start at the top of the list on Tapology, you know, click the American Top Team link. And it get, gets down to this guy, and his name is uh, Hussein Asko, uh, Askabov. Askabov. Hussein Askabov. And he has a brother named Kassin right underneath him. This guy is 23 and 0. His brother, Kass, Kassin, Kassan, it's, I don't know, Hussein and Ka Kassan. One of them's called The Lion. That's the undefeated guy. The other one's called The Black Wolf. Ask, ask Bob. But anyway, this is off topic. I noticed uh, these guys are pretty badass. The, and they're from uh, WWFC, which is like World... Uh, what was it called? Warrior something. Fight Club. It's out of, it's out of the Ukraine. These boys... I just wanted to throw that in there. I don't know. I wrote it down. Anyway, Marcus Perez, he's from America Top Team, too. You got to keep that in mind, which is a notable gym. That's why these boys from, these brothers from uh, Ukraine are going to come over, or, you know, from, they're actually Russian, but they that's the regional scene was the Ukrainian one. I can't wait to if, see if they're ever going to break into the UFC. Anyway. Um... I'm taking Marcus Perez for the upset here. Call me crazy, I know, but I got faith in it. I think it's annoying that he does the Joker paint. I hope, I mean, the cosplay, the Joker cosplay, that's corny, whatever. But each to their own, I guess, right? I'm going to take him, and I think he's going to, he'll either get it done by decision or... Uh, third round, he might be able to catch Lung Gambula in a choke or something. I mean, he's he's good. He's underrated, Marcus Perez, because people are fading him because of those last two losses. So be it. Because he looked like a fool going in there with Joker paint and then getting, getting his butt whipped. So anyway, I'm going to take him via decision. Yep, underdog. All right. Moving on, next we've got, oh, a boy named Sue, Sue Madarji from China. He's taking on, what did I do with that marker? Uh, Zaruk Adeshev. This is going to be murder. This is, like eBay said, this is like legalized rape. This guy, okay, Sue Madarji, the Tibetan Eagle, he comes in with a record of 13 and 4. He's taking on Zaruk Adeshev. This is the deal. Zaruk Adeshev was supposed to fight um, Jeff Molina, you know? But that uh, Jeff Molina gets COVID, so his replacement, I bet you Adeshev was like, oh, shit. <laughs> because his replacement is a, a murderer. Sue Madarji is a beast. Um... Okay, let me get into these. This I have a lot, a lot of notes here, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to, you know, make haste with this. It's two o'clock. Anyway, uh, Zaruk Adeshev, he's uh, 28 years old. Okay, three and two professional record. He's the underdog at plus 350. He's. Uh, Uzbek, he's like from Uzbekistan, but he's fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, out of uh, Nick Cantone MMA. His last fight, oh, his nickname is The Lion. Zaruk The Lion, Adeshev. His last fight was against Tyson Nam, where he got knocked out uh, by counter right in 32 seconds of the first round. Yeah, so a lot of people are fading him. He is, however, what a uh, little known, um, 
He, he's from Glory Kickboxing. You know what his record was in Glory Kickboxing? 16-3. and three. That, That's not bad. But, um... You know, that doesn't necessarily carry over that well when you come to the UFC. But, uh, so... That's pretty much what I got to say about Zaruk Adeshev, the lion. Uh, Sumadarji, the Tibetan Eagle, he's, uh, he's coming off a win against Malcolm Gordon. He made short work of Malcolm Gordon, but Malcolm Gordon kind of sucks. I mean, no, I don't like to talk diss anybody, but that's what the cappers are saying. <laughs> They're saying this is not a big deal. He's fighting with Alpha Male, though. He is from China, and he used to fight with, like, Embo Fight Club, and I looked them up on tapology and it's you know a whole bunch of Chinese guys and a couple of Russians Russians but anyway um now he's fighting out of alpha male okay let's get on with what these cappers have to say let's start with boy named Sue the Tibetan Eagle Madarji okay um Clint from Die Hard MMA podcast Clint McLean, McLean, uh, he's he's on board every, uh, he's on board with, he thinks Suma Darji's going to wipe, wipe the floor up with this guy, but uh, his key thing is the over is his play, like he, he was letting out these secrets in advance, because he does a show called uh, Total, get it, Total Madness, the total here is one and a half rounds. He's pretty sure that Adeshev can make it over one and a half rounds. Madarji, he's Madarji's very lean. If you look at him, he's got that lean body, and he's got like a. I don't think he's got a reach advantage. He might even have be short an inch or something. I didn't write that stuff down, but anyway, Clint thinks it's gonna go over. Then we've got uh, fight night picks. Both Matt and Craig, hands down, taken Madarji. Uh, one weak weakness of Madarji is he's got uh, poor grappling, poor ground game. If if uh, this guy, but this guy's a kickboxer, Adeshev. You know he's from Glory Kickboxing, so it's if it stands up, Su Madarji should be able to piece him apart. Um, Vlad from UFC Celebrities and Classics, also saying Madarji. This is, you know, minus 450 favorite. It's a, I mean, it's, there's no value there. Adeshev's plus 350. There's value there, but he's most likely not going to win. Unfortunately, I, I feel bad for the guy. Madarji's, it's his 25th birthday on the day of the fight, on Wednesday. 20, turns 25 that day. The kid's got everything going for him. Um, your boy, Ebay's. Ebay's, he's the one that said this is going to be legal, legal, like legalized rape. This guy's going to uh, destroy. It's, uh, he's got first round murder. <laughs> first round TKO. Um, then finally, Just Bleed, also overwhelmingly confident Sumadarji is going to handle his, take care of business within the distance, inside the distance. <laughs> so there you have it. This is a full capper consensus. Huh, scared my cat. I guess my daughter's upstairs. She usually she comes in and does the full, full capper consensus. A full capper consensus is when all the handicappers overwhelmingly pick one side, not even one person picks the other side. And in this case, everybody is overwhelmingly taking Suma Darji to wipe up the floor with the lion, Zaruk Adeshev. Even though his last name does end in a V. I don't know. Yeah, so I can't go against that. I mean, I'm not going to bet this. I might maybe throw it in as a parlay piece just to... But I don't even... Yeah, there's no value here at all on this. But I got him 
doing it also within the distance. You know, I feel bad for Zarouk. He would have had a just a, a fine time against Jeff Molina, I think. He would have maybe even beat Jeff Molina, but Sumadarji's a yeah. Okay, moving on. Oh, another th you know what I forgot to mention about the Lumi, which I'm uncertain. Okay, ESPN has this listed as a middleweight fight. Sorry to jump back. I hate doing that. I know. But um, Tabology has it listed at light heavyweight. That's something to know because if it's middleweight, Lungi Ambula, he, he's walking around with weight. It's like 200. He already sucked weight December something for Kevin Holland, but got canceled. So he has to suck weight again if it is a middleweight fight. But Just Bleed was saying... It's because he's going by Tapology. Tapology says it's a light heavyweight fight, meaning it's 205. That means Perez is going to be have is going to be outweighed because Perez is walking around weight is 185. I forgot all about that. I just I noticed the notes here. Told you I had a lot of time this morning, so I just want to throw that in. All right, back to it. Next on the docket, we've got. Uh, Ricky Simone, former LFA champion, taking on former K1 champion, Gaetano Perello, Italian born, fighting out of Belgium. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Perello a little bit. El Tigre, that's his uh, name. He is fighting from um, the. His last fight was a win in the European beatdown fight promotion. Uh, he got a liver shot knock, knockout or TKO of some guy named Enzo Maria Lezzi in the first round. That guy, Enzo Maria Lezzi, decided he doesn't want to fight. He qu quit fighting after that, I guess, or something. I guess he was on his way out. He's a 500 fighter. I think his record was like... Like a six and seven or something. Anyway, um, he's fighting out of Osman Gym, which I had to search. I found that out from the boys at Fight Night Picks because on Tapology they have listed as Victor Team Shaolin, which is a gym out of Belgium. The Osman Gym, uh, their Facebook page is written all in French, which I know they speak French in Belgium. But I, I then um, I went on Google search Osman Gym and it looked like it was located in Turkey. So I have no idea. Maybe that's a different Osman Gym. Anyway, whatever. He's fighting out of the Osman Gym. And um, yeah, aside from that, there's... I do have... Okay. Like I said, he was a K1 champ. He is a Muay Thai kickboxer. Um, Vlad, the, um, Bulgarian cowboy knows all about this guy because, you know, Vlad's kickboxer too, uh, Taekwondo black belt. But anyway, he, he actually saw this guy fight before he, well, or he watched one of his fights. And, um, the thing is with this guy, Tano Perello, he's got real shitty ground game. That's his, and he has horrible, poor, horrible takedown defense. So all he can do is clinch and kickboxing. So he's going to try to keep the stand up. Now, Ricky Simone, former LFA champion. He is uh, the favorite at minus 385. He has a record of 16 and 3. He's coming off a win against Ray Borg, split decision win. However, right before that split decision win, he did get beat twice in a row, once by decision from by Rob Font, and he got knocked out by Uriah Faber about a year or year or two ago, something like that. Um, he's fighting out of Vancouver, Washington, which is pretty much Canada. Um, Team Oyama out of Portland, Oregon. That's what the boys at Fight Night Picks is saying. On Tapology, it says Rose City Fight Club, and it also says Gracie Barra, which is in Portland also. So it could be all three of those places. 
Gracie Barra has uh, Chael Sonnen goes there, I guess, uh, at Herman. Um, okay, let's go. We got um, Taken Ricky Simone. We've got Itch Boy eBay's. He didn't really say how, but he definitely got him winning this. Then we've got um, Vlad from CNC, the Bulgarian Cowboy. Even though he do, he has seen Pirello, so he he I think he he knows this guy Pirello more than more because the he's he's in he lives in Serbia, so he he you know the European regional fight scenes he's all over that. Okay, but anyway, um, we got uh, Just Bleed. This is a most very confident pick from Just Bleed MMA. Of course, it's minus 385. Look at, if Pirello ever managed to squeak this out, it's plus 305. But, uh, unlikely. Um, Fight Night picks, both of those Allen brothers are pretty confident too that Ricky Simone should get this done. And Clint from Die Hard MMA, he is gonna throw Ricky Simone in a parlay with somebody. Somebody, he was gonna do it with uh, Jaqueline Buckley, <laughs> but uh, good thing he didn't do that, right? Um, Dietrico, that was, that's Alessio Dietrico. That's who I met earlier. Man, I'm sorry, sorry I'm just all over the place. <laughs> anyway, time checks. No worry, time checks. You can follow the time markers. I am, oh, that's another second one. Boom, boom. I'm not doing the dance. Full capper consensus. Of course it is. These are big favorites, these guys. Huge favorites. Why wouldn't they be? It'd be something if they get upset, but I don't see it happening for either one of these guys. I'm on board with the full cap or consensus. Ricky Simone should be able to get it done. Um, I don't know much about this Gaetano Perello. Uh, he's from, like I said, he's from the other, but, uh, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. Let him think he's gonna probably go the distance. And I got, I don't know. Yeah. Ricky Simone by decision. Okay, finally we've got, this was supposed to happen at UFC Fight Island 7, but it got moved to this one. We have uh, Omari Ak Akhmadov, against taking on Tom Breeze. The Wolverine comes in at 20 wins, five losses, one draw. He is the underdog here, plus 136. Taking on Tom Breeze, fighting out of the UK. He's 12 and two. He's a uh, favorite at minus 156. These odds are from Bet Online. The over-under set at two and a half rounds. Uh, over is minus 150. If you think it's going to end before that, it's at plus 120. A little bit of a better payout. Okay, let's go. Um, I do have some notes about these guys too. Uh, Omari Akhmadov, Akhmadov, his last fight was a loss against Chris Weidman. Unanimous decision. Tom Breeze, his last fight was a win against Katie Bollard. He knocked him out, but everyone's like, oh, look at the competition. Katie Bollard, big deal. But still, he did his job, knocked him out, hammer fist. Um, Akhmadov, he is, uh, let me talk about his camp a little bit. He's fight. of course, he's fighting out, he's fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. He's Dagestani. His gym, according to Tapology, is called Dag Fighter. Every single person in that gym ends, their last name ends in V. Ev or Av. Look on Tapology, go through every single, right from the professionals, right through the amateurs. Every ends in V. Get this. Four, four people from that gym are named 
Magomed, Magomedov. Except they have different nicknames in between. Well, no, two of them are just Magomed. Mag I don't even know how you're gonna tell them apart. One of them has no picture, he's an amateur. But then we have one, his name is like uh, Iron something, and the other one's name is like Snake or something. I don't, I don't, I can't remember. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, I found that to be very interesting. Interesting. Uh, um, some notable names from that uh, camp is uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov <laughs> and uh, Zabit Magomed Sharapov. He's the one. He beat. Uh, he beat Calvin Cater. Not as bad as Max Holloway did last night. But yeah. <laughs> Boy, that Calvin Cater can take a beating. I the elbow smashes in that was like round three, I think. He got hit with these elbows over again and again. Oh man, I couldn't even I, yeah, he made the he got he earned my even though he lost, he earned a lot of respect from me, Calvin Cater. But I had, you know, Max Holloway. Oh, Max Holloway just dominated. He's he's a beast. Yep. Anyway, sorry to get off topic again. <laughs> Back to it. Um. Yeah, Tom Breeze. He's a. Uh, I guess he fights out of what's called Ultimate Training Center in Birmingham, England, according to, you know, the topology. But I didn't, there was one guy on there, forgot his name, that he, you know, he fights, he's lost like five in a row to regional guys like Jack Straw and good, good uh, English fighters. But anyway, where am I? Okay, Tom Breeze, you may have heard also, some of these guys think, say he has, he had some mental problems. He, uh, he's had anxiety prior to, he couldn't go to come to the ring for something, he had because of uh, anxiety attacks. And, but a lot of people, handicappers think he has overcome that. And he's shown that through his last fight against his opponent, Katie Bular. All right, here we go. Taking Omari Akhmadov. This is gonna be a good one because uh, the Fight Night Pick Brothers, they're split here. Matt, the younger brother, is on board with Akhmadov. But Craig is saying Tom Breeze, because Tom Breeze is very aggressive, comes in with that forward pressure that's going to be too much to be, to handle for Akhmadov. So yeah, Fight Night Pick Boys, split on that, all right? Then we've got um, Just Bleed MMA. He's on side with Akhmadov. Um... What's it? The Wolverine, Omari Akhmadov. I'm going to just call it the Wolverine. That's a badass name. Just Bleed MMA. Okay, then we have um, C and C. That's uh, UFC Celebrities and Classics, Bulgarian Cowboy, Vlad. He's on board with Tom Breeze. And uh, eBay's. It's your boy. Ebay's is on board with Akhmadov because he's saying it's going to be a decision. He's given him the advantage because of his wrestling. He is a Dagestani. Those Dagestani guys can wrestle. You, you know, undeniably best wrestlers in the world. Well, BJJ, you'd have to give it to Brazilian, <laughs> but Brazil. But uh, when it comes to grappling, if it's not from the United States, Dagestani, the Dagestani wrestling is phenomenal. Um, so anyway, yeah, they got, uh, he said, eBay says Akhmadov by decision should be able to maintain like uh, ground control and keep, get points through wrestling, chain wrestling, however he does it. <clears throat> but uh, Clint, now this Clint uh, on his uh, links in the description, but on his podcast, he really he says he doesn't want to take Breeze as a favorite, but he doesn't want to take Akhmadov either. But then this was an old show because remember this was supposed to happen last last night, but it's happening on Fight Island Eight instead. Um, or yeah, so this was supposed to happen, and he so this is off an old show, the one he had. Gianni the Greek in. Now Gianni the Greek, 
he says, he thinks uh, that Tom Breeze should be minus 200 or better because um, in the past, he's, uh, what do you say? He's like uh, against KV Bular, he was minus 500 or something. And uh, anyway, he said Breeze is get the, the value right now is on Tom Breeze anything if you catch anything under 200, he thinks Tom Breeze is, should be at minus 200 favorite. And uh, he, by saying that, he pretty much talked Clint into it. I think Clint, right before the end, he said, he goes, yeah, I think you, I think I'm going to tail you with that bet. And, oh, yeah, and, and Johnny the Greek said, I, this is this is a bet I'm going to, for my Patreon, <laughs> my paid subscribers. So, but yeah, he leaked it out. He's taking Tom Breeze. And because of that, I'm going to write Gianni the Greek. Because I don't, I mean, I should write Clint, but whatever. Gianni, all right, and Clint. And Clint. <laughs> because Clint did say, I'm going to tell you on that bet. So Gianni and Clint are with Breeze. And because of that, this... Die Hard MMA podcast. Because of that, they swayed my opinion. I'm also taking Tom Breeze. I think Tom Breeze is over that little anxiety, his mental thing he had going on. And who cares if KB Bueller Bowler was a garbage opponent? Doesn't matter. He did his job. I think he would have done it against anybody he put in front of him. He, they just wanted to test see if he's overcome his uh, mental cuckoo slump. Whatever. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know if the PC term is for it. I think Tom Breeze is going to get it done. Akmadov is tough as nails, though. So he's going to have to, Tom Breeze is going to have to do it by points. And don't go to the ground with, with a Dagestani wrestler. Do not do that. He's got to keep it standing. He's got to out punch him, out strike him, do the, get some volume on him. Maybe he'll catch him. Maybe he'll be able to catch him. But I think Akmadov's. Dolph's tough, but he has been, I think that he has a knockout in his past. He's been knocked out, I do believe. But still, I'm saying Breeze by decision. So to recap, time check. <clears throat> huh, 2.30. <laughs> okay, to recap, I've got uh, Marcus Perez... M M Maluco upsetting Dolce Lungiambula, the champion, Ch or that's, you know, I think, I think Perez, he's going to be fighting for his, uh, his UFC career and he's going to, yeah, he's, I think he's going to get the decision victory over there. Take the underdog on that. Then I've got boy named Sue. The Tibetan Eagle, Madarji, I got him winning within distance against this, uh, the glory kickboxer, Zaruk the Lion, Adeshev. Um, yeah, that's very common, but there's no value at minus 450. I suppose you can put it in a parlay, juicing it up a little bit. Um, then I've, same here, another heavy favorite, full capper consensus. Ricky Simone beating this uh, Gaetano Perello. I kind of, you know, I kind of like rooting for the underdog, but I just, my head says, come on, Ricky Simone, he's, he's definitely going to get it done over this guy. But, um, yeah, these this similar situation, no value in those two bets. I guess you can parlay them, parlay all four of these. Um, then we've got, uh, I've got... Uh, Tom Breeze getting the job done against Omari Wolverine Akhmadov. I got him winning by decision. So there you have it. Gather your info, place your bets, and cash those tickets. I appreciate you dealing with my jumping around. I should have, I should have wrote this show out and just followed like a sequence in order but i just jumped around oh forgot to tell you i went eight and two last night uh it's how my mind works just all over the place but anyway 
<coughs> thanks for dealing with me. All these cappers links will be in the description. Be sure to check them out. Subscribe to them. Subscribe to me. I'm going to keep doing this. I try to go through a wide range of sports, but UFC is my premier sport. I, I think I do best at predicting that. But I'm going to try to get in some hockey for some request, people requesting hockey. But anyway, good luck on these bets. I'll see you next episode with some main card predictions. Okay?